Uh, and thank you, uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, um, for your uh, championship in, in championing this, this particular issue. Um, I'm, I'm a little frustrated because I heard a lot about love. And one thing that I know is it's not because of the lack of love that we're not able to feed our children. It's not because of the lack of love that we are able to house people. It's not the lack of love that we are unable to um, uh, uh, save people from dying because they don't have health care. It's not because of lack of love um, that uh, you were able to finish college because you got help with childcare. <laughs> Love has nothing to do with this. And if you want to bring love into this, you got to bring radical love. Because radical love means that we radically love every single person within our communities to make sure that we are providing for them the basic rights as humans. That's what love is. And that's the godly thing to do. Mm. So if we, we want to talk about faith, we also have to remember that we can't pray our problems away. Exactly. You can't pray for your children to be fed so you're not crying because they're crying and they can't go to bed. You cannot pray for your medical bills to disappear. You cannot pray for the mold to stop poisoning your children in the classrooms. The other thing that frustrates me is people who have experienced poverty, mm. who have gotten the straps for their bootstraps, <laughs> who sit and talk about how we shouldn't do anything for the next person. Oh. See, as someone who knows severe poverty, I lived in a refugee camp, on the floor, no water, nothing. And I hear somebody say, here in the United States, they're fine with their grandparents not having running water? Mm. And that's supposed to be okay? Mm. Mm -hmm. Or we hear someone say, I, it was a choice made up to me to have my children and not be like the other black people who get to have children out of wedlock. We don't get to have those kind of conversations. Mm. The conversations we get to have is how we are responsible for fully funding our schools so all of our children have the opportunities we have as we sit in this room. We get to talk about the kind of opportunities we have as government to make sure health care is provided to everybody so that we don't have people dying in the United yes. States because they can't afford insulin. The conversation we get to have is making sure that there are no children, no children going to sleep hungry or being shamed in classrooms and in lunch rooms because their families don't have enough money to pay for their lunch. The conversation we get to have about the kind of poverty we have in this country is the kind of poverty that says it is okay for us to take photo pictures with veterans and be okay with the fact that they're sleeping on the streets here in the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So as an immigrant, as someone who came to this country, hearing about American exceptionalism and prosperity, I am appalled mm. that we get to sit here and have conversations as Americans about being the most charitable country in the world and not being charitable enough to house our homeless, mm. feed our children, care for our veterans. What is charitable about that? Uh. So I ask you, the kind of systematic barriers that exist in prosperity. That's the conversation we should be having. And, and so I want you guys, to, for the little bit of time that I have, to talk about the systematic <laughs> barriers that exist in creating prosperity and what it means for us to remove those so that all of us could have the prosperity that is guaranteed within our constitution. I, 